No, I think it's color and mosaic. Okay. Since you're ready, you're ready for, I'm ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. We're just going to let everyone get a chance to get in and then we will get started. Hello. Hello. We are doing the, um, we're going to go over some mosaic knitting things today. <clears throat> okay. And I think we've got almost everyone in. So we can All probably right. start. All right, we'll get started. Um, hi, I'm Suzanne Nielsen and um, Laura Cameron is with me too. And we're gonna be your hosts for tonight. Um, so we thank Sun Yarn Garden for hosting us and they are sponsoring and letting us give away gift certificates. So Laura, wanna tell us about those? <laughs> Sure. So this is the 48th Tutorial Tuesday, and this is sponsored by Zen Yarn Garden. Um, we put all of our Tutorial Tuesdays on our YouTube channel. I'm going to put the link to that in um, the uh, chat, um, and you will want to keep an eye on your chat. We will give you um, an idea of when we're going to be giving away those gift certificates. We have two $20 gift certificates. We'll give them away sometime throughout the evening by asking trivia questions and have you pop your answers in chat. And we will let you know um, when we're going to do it. So those of you who are watching from tablets or iPhones um, or other phones can um, open up your chat window and um, we will select from some of the correct answers. Those $20 gift certificates are good on anything and everything on the Zen Yarn Garden website. Um, yeah. And they also will stack on top of anything else that is discounted on the website. So um, tonight, maybe I'll share my screen real fast just to um, show what we're going to be working on tonight. Yes. Okay, so tonight we are going to be working on the pop and lock cowl. Let me kind of mess with my screen just a little bit. So this is a pattern by Lisa K. Ross um, on Ravelry, and you can purchase it from there. Our kits include yarn for it, but not the pattern itself. So I will pop all of these links in chat um, as soon as I'm done sharing my screen. Um, we have a kit on the website that includes the yarn that you will need, and that is um, one skein of our... Um, super wash, uh, super fine fingering. Um, and uh, we use the colorway Midnight. And then um, we also, it comes with a mini skein that is 200 yards of yarn. Um, one full skein and one mini skein or half skein are enough to knit the whole project. And the half skein that we used was in a special colorway called Pop Rocks, but we do have other colorways dyed and you will have um, some choice with that. If you are just interested in Pop Rocks or Sunshine or some of the other colors. Um, we also do have some mini skeins. Um, we have a Pop Rock Sunrise Garden and Sunset. So you could choose um, from those. I wonder if we have, I think they're all together, but you can see all the different colorways here and you could choose one of those um, if you wanted to, um, if you already had a skein at home that you wanted to add it to. Um, basically the, the best guidance that we can give, and I know that um, Suzanne's going to go into this a little bit, is to choose something that's contrasty. Mm -hmm. So I will pop those links in chat and I'm going to turn it back to Suzanne and she's going to talk to you a little bit about choosing colors and um, mosaic knitting. Yeah. Um, oh, one other thing is now we, we have, I guess we have the ability now to copy from the chat window, which we haven't had before. So, uh, you know, we used to have to click on the link in the chat and it would pull it up and then you would have it in your browser. But now you can like cut and copy um, if you want to like open a, a Word document or something for yourself um, to store all of these things in one place. Um, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, let's jump into choosing color. Um, the, the designer in this pattern talks about it a little bit too, um, but I thought we'd just go over it and then answer any questions. Please put them in the chat um, or raise your hand. The biggest thing, like Laura mentioned, is you want that contrast. And sometimes it's not as easy as you might think to see contrast with our eyes. We, we Sometimes you see something and you say, like, well, it looks like different colors to me. <laughs> um, but one way I always um, recommend is to take a picture of the um, of your yarn and then change it to black and white. And that kind of gives you a little bit better idea of just how contrasty they are. Um, so you really want that light and dark contrast. Um, and if you can see that in a black and white photo, then 
um, then you've got your contrast. If not, um, then, then you don't. <laughs> um, also with this one, especially with a lot of mosaic knitting, um, you don't want, you can use a variegated yarn, which is what we're doing, um, or a speckled yarn, but you don't want a lot of your speckles to be the same as your, um, as your base color. So, you know, right now our base color for most, for these kits is the, is the black. So you don't want your speckle to have a lot of black in it because that will just get lost when you're doing the mosaic knitting. Um, you won't see that uh, color come through as much. So, um, so those are the things to, to keep in mind. It looks beautiful when you have like a speckled yarn, one speckled and one solid, um, um, as long as they, they contrast and they don't have overlapping colors. Um, so anyway, I think that's a good general rule. The, the designer does talk about that. Um, she talks about it in her pattern too, but, um, yeah, any questions about that, please put them in, in the chat. Um, we can stop and, um, and have more discussions if we want to. Um, but, uh, I wanted to get into a little bit of the, today I'm going to cover actual mosaic knitting and the I-cord stitch. Um, uh, and like hiding your yarn in that I-cord stitch, which is needed in this um, pattern. And then the next times we'll cover some mattress stitching um, and just go over some questions and I have to look at my sheet. There's a couple other little techniques that we'll, <laughs> we'll get to too, but, um, but today I wanted to go over the, the meat. I wanted to go over uh, mosaic. So yeah. Um, what else, Laura? This pattern is in fingering weight yarn, um, and that's what's, you know, our yarn packs um, for the pattern are made um, for in the, the fingering weight and the, the right amount of yarn. So the pattern is um, actually uh, knit flat, and then you you do a little seam. So it is kind of like a, a cowl-ish shape with a, a triangle um, like bandana style, would you call that, Laura? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, and Laura did knit this one too, right? You already fit knit this I one? I did. So, I did the sample. The sample, yes. But I don't have the sample yet. No. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, so so the pattern itself, um, most of the time you are knitting with your background color and you're putting in um, kind of some slip stitch knitting or mosaic knitting with the stripes. The actual mosaic section, the kind of interesting detailed part at the end, um, that is that is the very last thing you do, you'll do. So um, one of the things that happens is um, you have rather um, large sections of, of your background color in between where you stripe. And so one of the things it suggests is rather than cutting your yarn every single time, um, you are creating an I cord at the edge of um, at the edge of the um, garment. So one of the things that it suggests is that you can carry your yarn up in the I cord. And so I think um, Suzanne's going to demo that tonight because that is yeah. one of the things you'll need to do right away. Um, and then the first sort of mosaic knitting is really pretty simple um, because it's in those it's a Actually, I can't. I have to look at the pattern again. If the if the striped rows are knit with the, do you have the pat? You have the pattern, don't you? I have the pattern. Yeah, yeah. Are, they are. They're just one color at a time. It's it is okay, mosaic. So so it's not actually mosaic until you get to the final part. Yeah, I think the final part is the the mosaic, and otherwise it's just like um, eyelet rows. So yeah, and I I will say that this knit up super super fast. I mean, I think I did this in the space of a week or a week and a half, um, without putting much time into it at all because most of it is just a fairly plain garter stitch, um, and you've just got your eyelet rows for interest, and then you've got your mosaic section at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So uh, without further, I will go into showing you my mosaic swatch here, and. Um, all right, so I have a mosaic swatch, and I did just want to show you that you can do mosaic on um, stockinette or on garter stitch. It's the same principle, um, but I am going to show you it on um, stockinette because that's what uh, the pattern is. And and like Laura said, we'll do that I cord edge. So right now I don't have an I cord edge, and I'm just going to start it here with you guys. Um, so. Um, Let's see, we'll go into the mosaic too. Um, so 
like Laura said, the, the mosaic, this complicated looking um, mosaic pattern doesn't come until the very end, um, but it looks complicated, but it's really not. And we'll, we'll go over it here. Um, so it, it's easy to tell if you're working with um, the light color yarn, you'll see that like most of the row is light. And that means I'm actually going to be using the light color. And whenever I want the darker color to show, I just um, slip the darker color from below um, so that the darker color shows. But most of the row, I'm working with the lighter color. Um, and then when most of the rows are the darker color, you'll be actually working with the, the, the darker color. Um, so it does help you know, make the pattern easier if you choose your your base color to be dark because then it lines up with your charts if you chose a really light you know base color and a darker um contrast color you just have to do that mental shift <laughs> um but all right so in the pattern the i cord edging is um just the first three stitches are always knit and the last three stitches are always um slipped with the yarn to the front um so I'll go ahead and just um, do a row like that. It is knit flat, just like I'm doing now. So it is knit three um, stitches. And maybe I'll just, uh, won't do any mosaic yet. So we can just concentrate on that I cord and then I'll go into the mosaic. Um, all right, so then we have, when we get to the end, we have, three stitches that get slipped, but this time we want to bring the yarn to the front and slip those three stitches in the front. And that, so for the edge stitch, that's the only like difference is that our yarn is going to be to the front. When we do the mosaic knitting, most of the time our yarn is going to be held towards the back. Okay. And now the same thing, our edge stitches are going to get knit and our last three stitches are going to be slipped. But now I'm in, um, I'm on the wrong side. You can tell it looks like my wrong side. So I'm going to be purling because the majority, um, well, I guess the first part of the, the project is a uh, garter stitch, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you always have these, these well, I guess I'll just keep doing garter stitch then too. So you always have the edge stitches stay knit and then we can still knit across cause we'll do garter stitch. And then we'll have the last three stitches. I'll bring my yarn to the front and slip those three stitches. All right. <clears throat> and now, um, since we're talking about hiding a cord so you don't have to cut your yarn, um, I'll show you that, hiding this in, in the, the stitch. So what you wanna do is have your the yarn, I'm gonna do another row with the yellow. So I'm going to bring my um, my yarn that's attached um, that's just needs to be get carried up. I'm going to bring it like over over the top and make sure that my yellow yarn comes behind. And if if you do that, then this um, is going to get trapped in your I cord. So from the back here. You always want your the yarn that you're carrying to be um, like your the yarn to get trapped by the color that you're using. So see how when that comes across, um, it's going to trap this color inside that I cord. And we'll do another row so you can see that. So just the knit three and work across. On the other side, you don't have to worry about carrying your yarn, um, but bring your yarn to the front and slip those three. And then turn, this is forming your I cord. And then um, again, we'll slip those three. And if you're, um, so we have three stitches, so I'll bring my yarn to the front and slip them. And now we can see here that my, my edge stitch is trapped um, behind that one, that one cord. 
And so then um, as I'm switching now back to, um, to the dark color, um, you'll want to still, it doesn't really matter first on the first row, um, you can just start knitting, but by the second row, you'll want to make sure that the, the other color gets trapped. So let's do another row to get us into the dark being the base. And that, see my stitch got pulled really crazy, but that's fine, just, just give yourself, um, pull it back out. All right, um, and bring it to the front and slip and turn. Yeah, it is a really cool technique. It makes me want to add an I cord to everything so that I can hide all my um so yeah, that I, I can always, hide all my carried yarns in there. I always like an I cord, um, even you know, when you don't carry it up yeah. because it makes your tails easy to hide. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, but it makes me want to put an I cord on the edge of everything so that I can carry all my working yarns up. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So and then this one, you know, would come kind of, even if you just bring it over the top of your needle and then bring your, your other yarn around, um, you just make sure that it gets trapped back there. So these three stitches, what happens is that these three stitches kind of curl around to form that I cord. And then by, by, um, by keeping that yarn in there, it gets, it all gets trapped inside the I cord. Um, so basically the point being that you can knit the whole first part of the cowl, um, even though you're doing, I think it's six or eight rows at once, even though you're mm -hmm. doing all of that um, dark in between your sections of light, you just carry your light all the way up and you don't ever, you basically have your first end to weave in and your last end to weave in and you don't have to cut it. Yep. That's nice. Yep. <laughs> it's super nice. Yep. And she has, um, I mean, there's lots of different ways to do I cord edges. And in, in this particular pattern, she does knit three at the beginning and slip the last three. I'll tell you when I write patterns, just because of the way my brain works, I always do all of the knit of the I cord on the right side. So I would have, uh, I would be, I would knit these three and then I would also knit these three. And on the back, I would slip both. I would slip here and slip here so that it would, you know, I don't know, just that's the way my brain, <laughs> it makes it easier yeah, for I me. Mean, it, it sort of depends. Um, the, the one nice thing about doing it this way is every row starts and ends the same. So you don't right. have to, you don't have to look at your work to figure out if you're at the front of the back. You just knit right. the first three and slip the last three. And slip the last three. Yep. So it just depends on, yeah, what, um, it what all turns out the same. <laughs> yeah. I've even seen I chords where you like, you always kind of knit one, slip one, knit one. Um, and yeah, there's just, there's lots of different ways. So if you see a different way, um, if you really like one way or the other, you can always like alter it to your preferred method. But um, yeah, the only important piece is that, is that on the one side where you have your working yarns, you are going to want to make sure that those are going to get tucked in there. Yeah. Um, and I will also say, um, be sure that um, every so often you might have to untangle your cakes of yarn because you are twisting them. So they yeah. are, are going to get twisted. That's just, twisted. that's the nature of this pattern. Um, you know, so just, just be mm -hmm. careful with that and take time to untwist them every so often. Yeah. Um, it helps if you, if you can make yourself like when you're, when you're working this direction, you turn this way. And then when you, after you work this row, try and turn the opposite way. <laughs> that could help. Sometimes that helps a little bit, but, but like Laura said, the nature of it is just that you're purposely kind of twisting things. Um, so that's going to happen. Okay. Um, Someone asked right. tips for being sure the carried yarn isn't being pulled too tight. Right. Yes. Um, so when, after you, before you're going to start like now, um, well, I mean, it, it, it makes a difference when you have, when you're carrying your yarn a farther distance, if it's only like a one row, it, it hardly matters. But what you need to do is pull. So pull your edge before you start knitting with your next color. So after, if this color has been carried for a long ways, just give your edge a, a pull 
and then start knitting and then maybe knit two stitches and then pull your edge again to make sure that you haven't like pulled really hard and cinched your edge up. <laughs> um, and, and don't worry about it being too loose really because it's just hidden in that I cord. Um, I don't think that there's a risk of not, of making it too loose. I guess there would be, but. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Um, and I will say that it's at least the way the way the kit works. Um, we use the darker yarn as the background and the lighter yarn as the um, the stripes. So it's always going to be the lighter yarn that's going to be carried. And I just I didn't pull it too much as I trapped it. I didn't bother. Mm -hmm. And then it was just as I started to work with it again that I kind of adjusted it and tried to kind of get it right. And yeah. again, if you pull too tight on the first couple stitches, you can still you, you need to check it after you've knit like the first two stitches because that's mm -hmm. where you can still kind of pull and adjust it a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you're a tight knitter, then when you form those first stitches, you'll you'll be pulling it tight. So do stop yourself and pull. So here, I'll just do it real quick. So I'll I'll like knit two stitches, say, or knit three, even knit the, knit the I cord, and then just stop and pull this down to make sure that you have enough length um, from wherever you're you last used that color, and then carry on. Yep. Um, because by the time you've um, knit three stitches, even if you pull this really tight, well, of course, that's the stitch that is not secured. <laughs> even if you pull this stitch really tight, it's not going to like cinch up all of these stitches. So just make sure you you give yourself that that little room um, is what I would say. All right, let's pause maybe and give away a gift certificate and then I will show mosaic. Sure. Sound good? <laughs> sure. So um, go ahead and open your window, your chat windows, and I'm going to take the third correct answer. And um, the first question is, what weight yarn are we using for this project? Nice. Okay, it looks like Katrina is the third correct answer. And yes, that's fingering. We're using Zen Yarn Garden Superfine fingering in a full skein and a half skein, which is 200 yards. Do you want me to do the second one now or? Let's wait, do you think? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll, do, and... I'll do the mosaic quick and then we'll do. Uh, and and we'll for do... winners, go ahead and message Zen Yarn Garden. She is here in the chat with us. You can just select her name and message her. She will have you send her your email address and she will get you your $20 gift certificate. All right. Um, so now we're going to do actual mosaic knitting um, like you see in the, the edge um, or this whole like beautiful border here um, in this pattern. Um, like I said, that, you know, there's different ways that um, mosaic knitting can be charted and written. Um, but this um, way, let's see, we can look at our chart too. Um, so the edge stitches that look kind of complicated, that's just what we've already been doing. So we've already been um, knitting the edge here. We've already been knitting them and then over here, slipping them with the yarn to the front. And then this is just showing you that when you're on the wrong side, um, you're going to be knitting instead of purling. So in this chart, we're getting to um, where we're going to um, be doing stockinette. So we're going to knit on the right side and we're going to purl on the wrong side. Um, all right. So let's let's look. I'm just going to do however many stitches I have here. I have uh, seven stitches. So we'll just do these seven uh, first seven stitches that are um, in in this chart. So I'm only going to work on these. Maybe I can put a piece of paper there. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do an edge. The edge stitch is just knit three. So I already did that. I'm using the light color. Um, and then the first two that I see are slipped. So usually in mosaic knitting, you're not going to be slipping more than like two or in a row. Often it's usually only one, but here we do have two stitches to slip. Um, so I'll always, when I'm doing the mosaic work, my yarn is always going to say to the wrong side. So I'm on the right side of my work. I can see the beautiful um, color work. I'm on the right side. So I'm going to slip these stitches, slip two, and just keep that um, color yarn towards the back. And then I have a stitch that's just regularly knit here, knit. 
and then um and then another slip stitch. So I'll slip that one and then knit, regular knit three stitches. You can see I'm not even really, I'm not thinking about how much yarn to leave. Um, I'm just kind of knitting. If you're a super tight knitter, then you might want to make sure that you're not pulling too, too tightly um, uh, when you're, when you're slipping your stitches, but, but in general, just um, kind of, as you're working, spread your stitches out a little bit, how they would be, I would say that would help. Um, but for me, I really, I don't even have to think about it a lot. Um, and then when we get to our edge stitch, I'm just going to bring my yarn to the front and slip those three. Um, and then turn. So in this pattern, as with a lot of mosaic knitting, um, I'm, I call the second row, you can look at the second row. The second row is uh, you're slipping the exact same stitches that you did before. And that's kind of, we've got to get ourselves back across so that we can change yarn over here. So we're going to be um, working back this direction, uh, but I'll call it a rest row because I really don't have to look at the pattern. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing that I did below, but I'm on the wrong side. So I'm on the wrong side here. So I'm going to, well, the edge stitches I'm going to knit. Um, that's what it tells me to do. And now if I see the color that I'm working with, so if I see the yellow, if I see that light color, I'm going to purl. And now if I see the, the dark color, I'm going to slip it. So slip that one and keep the yarn to the wrong side. So since we're purling, it makes it kind of easy to just keep the yarn to the wrong side. Uh, purl that stitch and then slip two stitches. This is the kind of crazy one. Now I'm going to slip all three stitches. So this one does have kind of a long float um, because I have to slip those stitches for the, um, uh, whatever I'm I saying. I cord, yes. <laughs> all right. So now we would come to our next row. So on the next row here, um, we are using the dark yarn. And so I'm I will going say, to in this section where you're doing the mosaic knitting and you are switching your colors every two rows, you don't have to worry about tucking that working yarn in because you're going to be switching so frequently it's not going to matter. So yeah. that's one less thing to think about in this section while you're doing the mosaic because you are switching every two rows. Every two rows, yeah. So I would though, Laura, did you do this like when you had this long of a flow? I would have. I mean, I would think I would bring this here and, and make sure my working yarn comes up and does kind of lock it in. Um, but um, like Laura said, I don't think it really matters. To be honest, I don't remember whether I did or not. And of course, you don't okay. have a sample to look at. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Actually, what I would do. You certainly could. But if it feels like too many things to keep track of. Yeah, just don't, don't worry about it. To. I think don't because, worry about because it. Because it's also not. It's not like you're going to have a long trail of yarn on the back because very much like when you're knitting just two row striping, um, you, you don't really need to do much to hide that because it's not traveling very far. Right. And you already you're going to have these floats anyway because of the nature of mosaic knitting. You you have those floats behind. So let's yeah. just leave it. We're going to leave it and, and do another row with um, with the dark color. Um, all right, so I have my edge stitches. Oh, I skipped an edge stitch too, but anyway. Um, and then I have, I'm gonna knit. So I can tell here that this is a dark color right above um, a light color. So I am gonna knit this light color. So this is not my rest row. This is where I'm actually like changing things up here. So I knit that stitch. This is my loose stitch. So I can I can pull that to make it a little bit um, tidier. Um, and then I have another, um, a knit that's right above, um, right ab above this ones that I slipped. And then I'll have, a um, a slip. Sorry. I see that now. So I want this to stay that light color. So this one's going to stay light, slip it. And then I have, uh, two just knits, um, and the knits, sorry, my, Paper slipping. The knits are um, into that that light color. So I knit, knit these two, slip my edge stitches. Okay, but now this row, 
is uh, the row that's right above um, the one I just did. So I'm going to be working back this direction, and I'm going to um, I'm going. It's going to be a rest row because it's exactly the same as the row before it. So turn my work. Edge stitch is knit, and then I just work the stitches that I see. So I see the color that I'm working with. Oops, now I see the opposite color. So I'll slip that one. And now I see the rest are all colors that I've been working with. Oops. And then I have my last three to slip. All right, let's see. Almost up on our time here, but I will um, do one more row to show that uh, what this is going to look like after it's been carried such is a long time to do one more row. I know <laughs> I'll do it with the white, the yellow or the yellow. Okay. So um, so I'm just going to leave this one tail flung back there and bring my yellow up. All right, so I have my edge of three. which I know the pattern is for, but I, I'm just doing three here. Um, and then I have this knit one and then slip one, knit one, I'm tighten that one up a little, um, slip one. So I always keep my yarn towards the, the wrong side. And then I have knit three, one, two, three. I can tell that this one should be the same color as, um, as what I'm working with because it got slipped um, in the previous rows. And then I have, um, uh, let's see, where one. am I? Yeah, right here. <laughs> uh, work two. Yeah. Slip one and then knit one. Is that right? Did you slip your green? I slipped one. Oh, no, I didn't slip it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So slip this one and then knit this one. All right, and then slip my edge stitches, turn. Now I'm on a rest row, so I can just do what I see. So I knit, and then I purl, if I see the color, slip since it's not. And, uh, yep, I'm running out of yarn here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, so that's kind of the general idea. Um, we do have other mosaic slip stitch tutorials, and this one will be up um, on our YouTube and on our Facebook. It will be up on our Facebook page this evening, and then it will also go up onto YouTube in the next day or so. So if you want to watch it again, you can watch Suzanne um, do those stitches again. And that is starting to show you a little bit of the pattern. Um, it's obviously just a very small part of it, but yes. you're going to end up with um, a really beautiful section. And I will say that when you're working and you're you're working your longest rows at this point so it will not be quite such close quarters and and you won't be having to think about your eye cord that often because you'll have longer rows of mosaic stitch yes yes and then i'll also say well yeah i think next time i'll cover a little bit more on um how to make your mosaic uh look good if if things get pulled a little wonky i'll show you some tricks Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll save that for next time. So next time we'll get to see mattress stitch and, um, and a little tips to fix mosaic knitting and any other questions and whatever else I forgot that's listed in our, yeah. <laughs> in our thing. So but we any... are taking, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, we are taking one week off because next week oh, is yeah. American Thanksgiving. So um, we will meet again in two weeks. And yes, I know I still have a gift card to give away. I just wanted to let you know we'll be following up to this in two weeks. So there is still time to order your kit and potentially receive it before the next tutorial. Um, let's do the final gift certificate. If you want to open your uh, chat window, the question is, what colorways did we use in our sample? I did go over them very briefly at the beginning, and I'll accept either of them. The one that's pictured, right? Yeah, there you go. Oh, they got it. <laughs> oh, and I didn't say which person. I will take the first person, which is Margaret. And she said Pop Rocks and Midnight. You are quite right. So Yay. Margaret, go ahead and message um, Roxanne at Zen Yarn Garden. 
um, and she will get you your gift certificate. So um, just to kind of summarize, um, we, we did the pop and lock pattern by Lisa K. Ross. That is available for purchase on Ravelry. If you are interested in a kit, I put the link in the chat. If you want to watch any of our tutorials, including we have some others on mosaic knitting and then also the one from tonight, it will be on our YouTube later this evening or tomorrow. Um, and you can go back and look at that. And we hope you have a great time with your pop and lock towels. If you have any other questions, please drop them in the chat right now. Um, or you can- Or save uh, them for next Yeah, or the save next them tutorial. for two weeks. And if we, if you celebrate the holiday, um, enjoy it, eat lots of good food, and um, we'll be excited to come back to again, again, and knit together. Yay! Thanks for coming. Okay. Thanks. Good night.